It's all good. Howdy, howdy, folks. Welcome back to Hoot and Half. I'm your host, Matt King, with my co-host here, Mike Sheffer. We have so much to get into. I got back from Japan. Let's hop into this episode. We're just doing one angle today? Yep. Okay. Easy. Cool. Fine with that. Um, People liked it. They said it felt more comforting, and they liked that we can see. They felt like they were the third person hanging out in a conversation with oh, us. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Well, I'm cool with that. Um, but Mike... As you know, got back from Japan. It's not been like a few days. I feel like finally I'm now back on track with my circadian rhythm. I know I hate when people come back from a long trip and they're like, oh, I'm so jet lagged. It like, feels like 4 a.m. for yeah, me right what now. What day is it? Where <laughs> am I? Um, sorry not to pull that card, but yeah. I, I'm still a little like, ugh, like recovering. But you know what? I got my caffeine in me. Um, I'm vibing. It's I'm doing easier well. to go to Japan than come back. Because when you go... Yes. West, you wake up early, but when you go east, you're waking up later. So I feel like when you probably went to Japan, you were waking up super fucking early there. Yes. Yes. Very early there. And it's also, I feel like the adrenaline of going somewhere uh, new, like, also has a bit of, like, play and, like, how you wake up. But do you feel that when you go... Like to Europe? Do you have an easy time waking up? Because I have an easy time waking up anywhere that I'm excited to be at. You really like, are. I, I adjust because I'm just happy to be there. My body knows it. Uh, the, sometimes when I was there, I was like, I got to go back and take just a nap. Like, Or sometimes I'll get anxiety where I realize I'm like getting tired on a trip. And then I'm like, I need to go take a nap because yeah. that's going to make me feel better. I would rather go take a nap than be tired and not being able to enjoy right. myself. Um, but Mike, before we get into my Tokyo experience, you just... But you just went to therapy for the first time. I uh, I did my first therapy session. It was a virtual thing. Okay. Um, it was cool. I think it was is definitely valuable. I like... I've been hearing about it from you. Carly goes to therapy. I have friends back home go to therapy. And I think just the idea of like talking to someone that isn't your friend to like dump your yeah. sorrows and ideas and whatever out to is good. But what I found interesting just from the one session is I think a good therapist can ask you questions that you've never been asked before. So it makes you think about things that you know but you maybe haven't thought about. So like for an example is like what she was calling um, values. So what are your values and how do you define what is success to you? And like maybe you already have that subconsciously or even consciously, but to like go through and ask these questions of like, why do you value this over this? Like why is, Mm -hmm. you know, being Jewish more important than making a, like being a, a world traveler. Like some people's values is like they want to see the world. Some people's values is they want to raise a family. But asking questions in a way that like you're almost a biographer of yourself was was interesting. It's it's like I like to make... And they figured out all the ways where they can just peel back all the layers. It's almost like, uh, you know, like cop interrogations. Yes, how they're yes. able to like frame liars and get people to admit the truth. Yep. But out of years of therapy, they figured out the science of like getting down to the person at their core and uh, figuring out what, I don't know, makes them the way they are and helping them recognize it. Did you get a guy or a girl? This one, I have a, a woman therapist, which Ooh, I wanted. You did? Yeah. Why do you, why, I also had a female therapist, but I, looking back, I wish I had a male therapist. I don't know why I would want a male. I feel like if I had a male therapist, I would be like... I don't listen to this fucking guy. Like I, I'm, I'm a guy. I don't need a guy telling me stuff. I want a different perspective. I want someone who can like maybe be a little more sensitive. I felt like when I had a female therapist, I think it. I found myself leaning to more like of this maternal validation from her. You like, were looking for validation. I, well, I just feel like if I had a guy, sometimes. A little male to male energy is like, all right, bud, you need to buck up, get over this, and uh, uh, deal with it this way. Yeah. Just brush the dirt off your shoulders. You're going to be fine. Rather than when you are sharing that vulnerable side of yourself, um, I feel like to a woman, as coming from a straight heterosexual male, you're like, right? Like, I am hurting, right? Yeah. They're like, yeah, you are. Like, there's a bit of that at play. Okay. And I felt like sometimes I was just like gossiping with her. <laughs> and I wasn't getting down to the core. I This is my own experience or what I heard. Okay, so you... Did you cry 
in front of your male therapist. I never had a male therapist. Oh, you didn't have one? No. Looking oh. back, I wish I had a male therapist. I had a female therapist. But you didn't, you never, I, th- I thought you may have like tried a male one and then went with a female one and was like, oh, okay. I had a male psychiatrist. <laughs> but that's like, don't they see you for like 12 minutes and like, yeah. how's the Zoloft going? Cool, here's another. My male psych- psychiatrist was on the verge of death. Oh, he was like an old ass guy. Yes, you feel like even like when you like walk in, like you can smell it. Yeah, like you're like, oh god, maybe I, you're the one who needs to be prescribed something, buddy. I was oh, like, had to like double check when he was writing me prescriptions. Like, is this is this, is this even what I right? Need? Yeah. Um, looking back, I just felt like, but maybe maybe your it ther- did help. It did help. I feel like I should go back to therapy, but I think there's nothing like big that i need to work on and i don't know i feel pretty level-headed but uh, any- it's very important if you feel like you should you should do you feel any anxiety or any way about like the fact that you're getting married no you don't, you don't think you need to process that at all no even though patricia uh patricia and i are taking a uh journey through marriage course through like the greek orthodox church oh like, wow i think every couple that gets married in the church mm-hmm. has to take it it's from 9 30 until 4 p.m once well, yeah, like a one course. Oh, it's one day. It's one day. Oh, it's that's really long though, Matt. That's one. That's less than a full work day. <laughs> I guess so, but I was just like, I thought it was going to be just an hour. Nine thirty. Fill to out 4 like a little BuzzFeed survey at the end to see what you guys like are most compatible on, and then move on. <laughs> like, I'm just like, are we? I think it's like forty couples. It's all in Zoom. Oh, it's of? on Zoom. Yeah. Oh, you'll be playing Minesweeper on the other monitor. Just like, uh-huh, you think so? Yeah. Uh, absolutely not, Mike. I won't be doing that. But um, do you know how to play Minesweeper? Yes. Okay. Is there a okay? Is there a strategy to Minesweeper? A hundred percent. Now, for the people who don't know, Minesweeper, I'm pretty sure was an old Microsoft Windows computer game that was on like every Microsoft. Yes, Windows it came pre-installed with Windows, and it was a bunch of like checkered boxes and yeah. you would click on them and like a little area would show you'd be safe and then you just didn't want to hit the bomb yeah it's what's like a the grid? strategy it's then? a grid and then there would be numbers with on like the 64 edge. Like one two three four well no the whole thing is blank i think to start right it's blank to start yes and then you just click on a random one and then other squares will reveal themselves but i think that yeah there's strategy because it's probability like if you click and there's a one and a three you have to do the probability of like knowing Oh. Which one of those may have a bomb? The three is how many bombs are within the nine oh, block shit. radius. I never paid attention to the numbers at all. I thought those were just pure decoration. No, the numbers tell you how many bombs are in the vicinity. That's Ooh. how you do your strategy. And then you can leave flags where you think there are bombs so you don't accidentally click them. If you right click, you leave a flag on a thing. It's crazy. I never, I never ever figured out how to do the strategy when you see people just like going nuts yeah it's like doing math it's like sudoku or something sudoku sudoku Sudo- sudoku sudoku um, oh is sudoku still as popular as it used to be probably not they put it in the new york times app the spelling bee um Ooh, nice asmr crack dude on that. you should have played the last new york times crossword puzzle it was so good which the- one mondays I think it was Tuesdays of last week. Oh, I didn't do that one. It had, like, I like movies. It had like Titanic or Jaws, and it was. Don't no, no, don't tell me. I'll do it. I'll do oh, it. Oh God! All right, tell me the one. I don't want to say. Okay, it. don't tell. Don't say. Oh, I, it was I so like good. the one that you the Monday from two Mondays ago that said uh, podcasting partner. Oh yep, co-host. It might have been that. It might have been that one. That one was really good. Yeah, I don't think there was movies in that one. Oh, okay, that was a Monday. Anyway. Highly recommend going to therapy after my one time as if like I'm a revelation now. But it was it is tough to find a therapist too. Like I probably I got insurance, thank God, health insurance, which I know is not everyone can can get access to, but having health insurance with mental health like as part of the service. Um, I, I, even with that, I emailed like probably twenty therapists and only three got back to me with availability. I'm proud of you, Mike. Thanks. I'll, I'll keep you posted on my on my progress. Can you say her? Can you say her name? No, no. Well, I don't want to no. give it away. Yeah, she was like also like if uh, if I see you in public, I will not acknowledge you. <laughs> if you want to come up to me, you can. But like, is our, she that local? She's in L.A. Oh, yeah. Did you uh, not go to an L.A. therapist? I did in person, but you oh. just via Zoom. So I don't know if they're just placing you with someone in Gilbert, Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> What? Gilbert, Arizona? Is Just, that a place? Yeah, it's right outside of Phoenix. Oh, I never heard of Gilbert. That's good. <laughs> I guess, yeah, since it's virtual, you could really do it anywhere, right? Yeah. 
Did you? Did you? They're Jewish, though, right? Yeah. Did you request Jewish? No, I didn't know she was Jewish. Oh. But then I was like trying to schedule. And was like, well, I'm gonna be off for Passover, and I was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> uh, so that is nice to like have that connection too, because then I can talk about that stuff. Good. Um, anyway, that's uh, my latest update. Have you have you been to Japan before? I have not. I've never been anywhere in that. Oh, like in you've never East. been anywhere in Asia. Correct. Yeah, no. Not Thailand, not Japan. But you would love it. It is one of the most cleanest, most civilized places I have ever been to. I, before you went to Japan, I had a nightmare that I was on the trip with you guys. And we got there and I just immediately got lost. And all the signs were in Japanese and my phone died. And I was just like, I felt like I was on, an, I felt like I was on another planet. Like... I was on Mars, and I couldn't just either, I couldn't communicate with anyone, and I just had this like scary dream the night before you guys went because I just feel like it's such a foreign experience. The letters of like the language you can't even guess at what the fuck it's saying. All the buttons are weird. Their UI is different. Like toilets don't work the same. And I just like I would I feel like I would be stressed going there because I couldn't. It's not as stressful as you think. And okay. if anything else, it's almost feels like a scavenger hunt if you ever do feel like a little bit lost. Because they are a country where they have thought out everything. They've solved every problem. They want things to make sense. They take okay. pride in finding solutions out of problems. Okay. Everything down to like trains and how there's like these guardrails that go up and down to make sure people safely get onto the trains, umbrella dispensers and stuff like that, toilets, everything is, has been thought out. They just, they just have like a lot of nice a lot of nice cities that make life a little easier. You're saying? Yes, yes. There's all of these tiny little solutions that they've already made out there that have not made its way into the United States. Like that TikTok trend, things in my Japanese home that just make sense. You Co- see, yes, yes, like that kind Very of thing. Very similar to that. Um, and you experience that as a tourist. Completely. Okay. Completely. Tell me about hanging out with, uh, meeting up with Scott and Todd and David and everyone. Oh, they that also... was so much fun. It, they had already been there a couple of days before us. Originally, the plan was that we were going to do this whole trip with them at the same time, but we weren't able to because I'm pretty sure it was Natalie had uh, family made, coming in. Play, she had some conflicting plans. She had family that was coming in to visit LA, and she realized the trip wasn't going to be able to happen. And so they decided to go four days before us and go to Kyoto before us and all of that. So by the time we already got to Tokyo, we met up in Shinjuku. We went out in the Golden Guy. They had already been there, which is also kind of like a little like. Uh, uh, conflicting too because you're just now newly arriving somewhere and you're so like overstimulated and you're meeting up with someone who has already kind they of got like a little bit of land, of land. So uh, that was, but it was perfect. It was really great. Golden Guy is this area in Shinjuku, right on the corner of like that neighborhood that's like known as like the red light district of Shinjuku called Kabuchiko. Kabuchiko. I'm probably saying that wrong. Okay. Um, dude, you would love this street. It's these, t- it's how many like little alleyways of little bars all around it, all on top of each oh, other. I've heard of this. And yeah. these bars are, are made for just like eight people yep. max. Yep. So you and your friend group go in and you guys dominate the bar. And every bar kind of has its own vibe. You can tell some bars like they don't really want any like tour tourists or foreigners to come in there. They only mm-hmm. want to serve Japanese people. And you can see the ones that are also very like tailored towards Americans. And that's another thing that's uh you have to be like really aware of when you go to Tokyo or just I think Tokyo in general. Um is that if you are with a big group, unless you have made reservations way ahead of time, the likelihood of you guys walking into anywhere and all getting sat down isn't going to happen. I always recommend if you're going with a big group, you guys split off into like two pairs of two or three and go and enjoy your meal um, privately. Right. And we kind of had to do that with I kind of do that with uh, Zane Heath and like Mariah's Patricia and I. We would go off and just go enjoy it. Our own yeah, things. we were also a little bit more adventurous eaters than them. Okay, they were still a little skeptical. Of some things we'll get to that. Yeah, but uh, when we met up with uh, Todd Scott and Natalie and uh, uh, Jack, we uh, decided to go hit up a bar. Heath, Mariah, and Zane, they were they were tired from the flight, and they wanted to go back. But I was like, my adrenaline kicked in. I'm like, yeah. I want to go enjoy this. So we went to a place called Blue Dragon. 
Um, and I don't know if this is like a cool spot, It's, but I loved it. It was on the second floor of the Golden Guy. We dominated it. We did karaoke just as, as a group. Playing in the 1975. Yeah, I saw on Instagram Swift. and Snapchat. It was a blast. It was a blast. And, dude, the sake out there. Great. I wish sake was a little bit more normalized. Have you had sake? I love it. Do they heat it up there, too, or are you drink it cold? You can get it heated or cold. Patricia was ordering it a lot. I think Patricia preferred it cold than she did hot, but I like it I any other way. I love a hot sake, dude. Because, and I think, like, the, 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 the buzz you get from it's a different. sake. You know, tequila is, like, a, a whole different type of drunk. Yep. A sake drunk. Because it's from rice, I think, right? It's, it's a rice wine. rice wine. Yeah. yeah, which makes sense. Like, different starting ingredients will make you feel different. It's similar, like, obviously being drunk is being drunk. But, yeah, there's a difference between tequila, which is from, what's what's the fruit? Agave. Agave. Versus, like, beer, which is, like, barley is and wheat. agave a fruit? I think so. I or is it a vegetable? It's almost like a plant. It's like an aloe. You know, like, aloes. So it's a vegetable? Or is it a ninety? It's not a fruit or vegetable. Agave looks like they're like leaves. It's like you know aloe. Yeah, it's like that, right? I guess I don't know. Let us know in the comments. Is agave? <laughs> We're terrible. <laughs> we'll be right back to this episode after a quick word from today's sponsor, Talkspace. As we've mentioned in this episode, Mike and I really do see the importance of therapy, and it's always important to talk to somebody whenever you're feeling down. And sometimes you can feel down. You can feel that it's affected your life, and you realize that. It would help to talk to a therapist, but if you're not sure how to get started, Talkspace makes it easy to therapist that you will like. It's convenient to meet online, at home, or wherever you're most comfortable. And Talkspace can make a huge difference in your life because Talkspace is accessible and affordable. And you may be a person who thinks seeing a therapist or psychiatrist would be helpful, but you don't have the time to actually find one or meet up with them or even afford them. So try Talkspace. By doing everything online, Talkspace has made Getting the help you want, easy, accessible, and affordable. And sometimes people wait until something bad happens to talk to a therapist. But why wait? You can get a therapist through Talkspace, and therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times, and be a guiding light. Getting started is the important part, and Talkspace makes it easy and affordable. At Talkspace.com, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. It's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your home. There's no need to commute to appointments, miss time at work, or line up childcare in order to attend sessions. It's mental health care made easy easy. And Talkspace also lets you send messages to your therapist so you don't have to necessarily wait until your next session. Therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times, and be a guiding light. Talkspace is secure and private, using the latest end-to-end bank-grade encryption technology to store client information and complying with the latest HIPAA regulations. Talkspace is affordable and in-network with most major insurers. And as a listener of this podcast, Hoot and a Half, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash HH. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash HH and get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash HH. And now, back to the episode. You ever had Sambuca? Is that like liqueur and coffee mix? It's A-N-I-S is the uh, liquor anise or anise i think yes. it's pronounced and it's made from fuck it's made from a different plant and it's a completely different also kind of drunk i think it's the best one it's like the molly of alcohol damn it's I gotta really check good it out it's like an israeli uh arabic like in when you go to the middle east they're all drinking it it's called arak a-r-a-k and it's sambuca it, t- it smells like nail polish remover damn it, but it tastes you do you drink it straight up or do you make uh, a... usually you mix it with like some mint leaves or like maybe a little bit of juice it goes down smooth oh it's the best i gotta check that out uh tokyo had took pride in like a couple of different drinks one their big one was like a highball which was like suntory whiskey oh they do japanese whiskeys fucking rule yeah so good suntory is great suntory whiskey and like a soda, I think. Were you, then, were you getting smashed every night there? <laughs> um, yes. One night, I we got I got super smashed, but like every other like night, I eh, I drank definitely every day, but I not get, like, like hungover, super hammered. Yeah, I know hangovers. I had like got hot. I got 
went pretty hard two times. You know me, I don't get hung over that. Yeah, much. you really don't. That's such well, a all nice. All I do is like drink beer. I'm just drinking like Sapporo and Asahi. Yeah, especially when I'm on vacations, I think I'm very like I don't want to go too hard because I don't want to be hung over the next day and I'm not able to go out and enjoy it. Yeah. Also, lemon sours. They take a lot of pride. Were in. you speaking English to these to the people? I, how? So I did it Duolingo before I went, and I highly recommend if you are a person who is very curious and into languages, put in the effort to um, learn a bit. Duolingo, I'm a big fan of Duolingo. Shout out to Duolingo. If you ever want Duolingo, ever wants to sponsor me, I would gladly take it. Duolingo, though, I think is truly trying to teach you the language. Rather, if you're a type of person where you just want to like know a bunch of phrases just go on tiktok and search uh oh. travel phrases uh for japan and memorize those the biggest thing that i was also even trying to like drill into our groups uh yeah phrases is that we all know that what do you know what thank you is arigato it, arigato Arigato, even though that means thanks, it's a little too casual. It's very like, thanks. It's not like, thank you very much. Oh. So you need to say, arigato gozaimasu. Oh. What's domo arigato? Domo arigato? I don't really know. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. Is that what you're saying? I think but I think that means something. Uh, domo arigato. I don't know. Okay. I'll do a quick Google, but continue telling me about your phraseology here. What, uh, what are the phrases so, you learn from TikTok? So I guess I would say arigato go, uh, gozaimasu. Like, that's what they're always saying back to you, and you say it back to them. Also, um, what is domo arigato? It says it means thank you very much. No. But maybe it's like not, it's still not the right. There's certain contexts where you are a tourist going around, You there's certain things like. Yeah. Yeah, don't say. But, but are, do the people but, there speak English or do they yes, speak Yes, most speak... people do speak English. But I was definitely in certain times talking to people. Like, I went into a pachinko place. Pachinko is the big slot machine game where they have all the little metal balls and stuff. Like Plinko, where it goes plink, plink, plink. Yeah, plink, but it's plink. called pachinko. It's not Plinko. Pachinko. I think it's Plinko. Plinko, yes, is a form of a ball that there's American thing like that. But the one that they play in Tokyo is called Pachinko. Is there a skill involved? Or is it pure luck? The, uh, a bit, it's almost kind of like Minesweeper. There's a bit of probability in guessing. And you're on this throttle that you have the, the little beads go down. It's okay. almost kind of like a, a pinball machine. Okay. Okay. So they have a whole store of these that you went to? Dude, there's tons, rows and rows and rows of it. And it's a great way people pass time because then you get to go to like an arcade uh, game thing and like redeem whatever your prize is for like, oh, a, a Red Bull or a oh. bag of chips. <laughs> oh, you f- play for your food. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. It's pretty fun. So, we, where were we? I was asking about your phrases. Speaking phrases. English. Oh, Good morning, Ohio. Uh, good evening, Go Ohio. Ma- Ohio, like the state. Ohio is what? Good morning. Wow. What's the customs there? Are people saying hi to each other in the streets? Is it no, silence? No eye contact. A lot of silence. Not like the South, where you get like, "Hey, hey, how to, how you doing? Good morning." No, yeah. There's not like a lot of like no small talk. Not really, but everyone there is so willing to help. Really. For the most part. And another one, like, uh, I'm sorry, is gomenasai. I'm pretty sure that's what you say. Uh, with, but that, like, really means, like, this big formal I am sorry. Which a lot of times they're like, oh, no, 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 don't worry about oh. it. But when you say that, though, they're like, oh, my gosh, this person does feel bad. So I always <clears throat> would, like, sprinkle that anytime I uh, <laughs> leave it up to Matt King to learn the most official I'm sorry. <laughs> as if you're going to need that in your daily. It did. It did come. In hand. You do love apologizing. You do be apologizing a lot. I apologize a lot less. Well, not I, like, I apologize not to say that I need the forgiveness of other people, but I'm just apologizing because like, I want to show that I'm acknowledging Apathetic, yeah. uh, how much time I've wasted of somebody. <laughs> uh, what do you think I would have liked? In Japan, like if I if was there a moment where you're like, oh, Mike would love this. Not that you were thinking of me on the trip, but now thinking back, is there something where you went to like a store, like you went to the Vampire Weekend, got the Vampire Weekend CD with the bonus track? I did. Like, what was that? Just a regular record store? Was there something unique about that? Well, you had told me originally that there the reason why there are bonus tracks on Japanese records is because. 
Uh, yeah. So if you were live, if you live in Japan, it is cheaper to import the U.S. version of an, a record, like a vinyl record, than it is to go to your Japanese record store and buy the Japanese version. For whatever reason, because import taxes, whatever records like physical vinyl is more expensive in Japan than it would be to just import it from the U.S., which is crazy. So labels realized this and they wanted to sell more Japanese-made records, so they would. In, on Japan releases, put bonus tracks. So if you ever see like Japanese bonus, bonus track, whatever, it's usually on the Japan version. It's to entice local Japanese people to buy records that are locally sourced. So you went to and a record I, store. And I bought the uh, the Japanese album. What are the two songs? Weekend. Have you heard them before? I'm pretty sure it's the one with Jude Law. On a, on a Vampire Weekend song? Yeah. Okay. So he, he reads this like passage. Okay. And then the other one is, it's almost like a Bob Dylan track where it's like, I don't think about her no more kind of a thing. Okay. It sounds like, I'm pretty sure it's those two. It's still just maybe sick wrong, to have. Like it's, a, all, it's in Japanese on the, the CD cover, but it's super cool. Oh, one thing you would like, 7-Eleven, it was some of the freshest quality, Um, what's it called, enigri, which is like, you know, those little triangular uh, sushi rice things. Where it's like wrapped in seaweed, it's like a triangle of sushi, and then you have like a, like the a hand fish. roll. Yes, but yeah. it's not like a roll; it's like a triangle. Okay. They Those. would get that at a. You would get sushi at a Seven Eleven. Yes, and uh, Mike, I'm telling you, it is divine and super, super fresh. <sighs> Pete, he, Zayn, and Mariah were looking at me like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "No, this stuff is super fresh." Yeah. Yeah, that's like there's something there's another like gas co- gas station coffee somewhere is supposed to be really good. Is it in Italy maybe? Pro- oh yeah, yeah. You get like food at a gas station in Italy, and it's like the best breakfast you'll ever have. Yeah, because the it's just so fresh. So did you eat we, a lot of sushi? Uh, yes, yes, uh, a, a good amount. I wish that I had made reservations at a nicer sushi place, mm-hmm. like and have a true like omakase experience. Yeah, but. I think it was just tough with like you know. Yes. Uh, once again, I love Zane Heath and Mariah so much. They are not as adventurous as I am when it comes to food. So like the time we were there, like we had to kind of like teeter on catering to their own taste and ours. But Patricia and I, we would go to just those sushi conveyor belt places. And that's still it's great quality sushi. Yeah. Um, and we would just go to town on eating all of that. How, as wait, much as how we does could. the conveyor belt thing work? You've I feel never like been to a conveyor belt sushi? They have them here in the US? They there oh there's a couple in like Koreatown and there's one back in Carrollton, Texas, right by my parents' house. I've never been to a conveyor belt sushi. What's the what's the setup? Well the places I don't know if this is like new COVID procedure in Japan, but both of the conveyor belt sushi places we went you, m- most traditionally the places the sushi just comes out, and you take it off the tray, and you eat the sushi, and then you slide it down into a little dispenser. Do you order what you want? Or you, you can. Just like- you, uh, every table has an iPad, and you order it, and then that just zooms right to you. But is there just like <coughs> is there just like a presentation, and you can be like, ooh, that one looks good, and then you grab it? Yes, you can do that at certain places. Like anarchy, just, oh, oh, I see a, yeah. some spicy tuna coming. I'm going to get that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's kind of fun. It's so much fun. And uh, yeah, Patricia and I did that multiple times. So that was like the sushi we had, though I know there was better sushi. Buddy, some of the best ramen I've ever had in my entire life was out there. We went to Ichiran Ramen, which you actually recommended me. There is one that's in New York City, and that's the one that like has won a whole bunch of awards where they perfected ramen. It's almost kind of like the In-N-Out Burger, but of ramen in but it's also like part of the experience is you have a little booth that's private to you and you're directly talking to like the guy who's making it and you never like, see the guy he's under the little window yeah but it's like you're it's a it's a one-on-one experience you're yeah. not like going there you're not going to bring it i guess you could bring a date there but it's not you're not bringing a group of eight and having a conversation yes. it's very like but yeah that's cool to go to the to one in japan and the ramen was that one was the best and patricia and i we even ate there twice because like we love the one in new york city and we were wow like, let's enjoy this while we can then we went to Kyoto, and there was a place called Ramen Miyako, which I had found on TikTok. There's a lot of hype where they say that, like that's one of some of the best ramen in Kyoto. We got there, and I thought we would still be able to walk in. No, we waited like an hour and a half nearly to get in, 
And Patricia and I, our patience was getting tested because, like, sometimes a bunch of people would be able to walk in, sometimes none yeah, were. Yeah, that's tough. And we're like, well, once you reach the 45 minute mark, you're like, well, I don't want to walk away because we yeah. already made it this far. Yeah. We walk in, it was one of those true traditional ramen places where um, it's like a chef who has perfected his own recipe. It's just him, another guy, and one waiter, and like only a couple tables. Well, there's your hour and a half wait. Oh, man, we sit down and it was. Delicious. What did you get? I got like the Sono ramen, which was like the chef's traditional ramen, I'm pretty sure. Do you think with my dietary restrictions, I would be able to survive? Oh, shit. I always forget about your dietary restrictions, like, Mike. I mean, I could just do the like... fish. And do they, have, do they do tofu out there? Like yes. veg- vegetarian Actually, stuff? Actually, you'd be totally fine. They, they're, they're into... Because ve- like, I feel like some places are not hip to vegetarianism yet. Yeah. Like, I don't know, maybe some places that are like a little more rural. Um but Tokyo, you think that they they would have like, you know, salmon? Or- yes, there was a lot of vegan ramen places all over the place. Oh my god, I love a vegan ramen, dude. Yeah, you damn, would've, you'd have been totally fine. You're gonna go back? Yes, yeah. Uh, oh, for sure, I'm going back because I don't think that one week is not enough time. One week, I don't feel like is even enough time to even fully experience Tokyo. Patricia and I were talking about like we want to come out we i would live in tokyo for a month really mm-hmm. i'd go out there for 90 days of uh, truly to experience it all i don't feel like it was enough and you loved it you didn't have any like tokyo paris syndrome where you were like this is not what i thought it was gonna be like was it was no, it what you were... i was prepared for that i was prepared to keep my expectations at bay i'm yeah. always like that before i go on big international trips because right. Or even before I go to big parties in general, I'm always like going, don't get your hopes up too much and let the place reveal itself to you. That's how I felt. Um, But no, I don't think anything... You know what was kind of a little disappointing? Shibuya Crossing, which was like, you know, it's like the biggest intersection intersection in the world. I kind of had a real... It almost felt kind of like New York uh, or Times Square. Okay. That you're like, okay, maybe it could have been cooler at night a little bit, but it's just people that, living their life. Like, it's not actually. Yeah. Dude, there's a place called Super Potato, which is the vintage. Um, it's a burlap pack. <laughs> vintage. <laughs> it's the vintage uh, video game store. Oh. Four levels of all your favorite childhood video games, but all the Japanese versions. I wanted to ask about this. I saw you got Banjo Kazooie. Dude, I. So. I got that not at Super Potato. I got it in Akihabara, which is like the uh, technology district where all the video games, electronics, manga, anime, everything's made around there. There's all these like vintage video game stores. (sighs) And I walked in and I was like, I just want a Japanese copy of Banjo-Kazooie. That was like my favorite video game on Nintendo 64. And I walk up and I'm like, do they have it? Do they have it? And boom, right there, like the gold Japanese uh, Banjo Kazooie game. Do you think it would work on an American N64? Do, do they know tell what, you that? Do you know the whole thing about country codes, though? I think it's with. I know it's with discs. There's pa- oh, I, PAL see, that's and what N- I, NTSC. But you don't think cartridges? I don't work? know. I don't think so. I think it was a disc thing, and it was just for licensing. It's like really stupid. It doesn't I, act- like DVD. I remember I got Battle Royale on DVD, and I was so excited to watch it when I was a kid. And then I was I could only watch it on the computer. Yeah, uh, because CD-ROM drives had both. It was called NTSC, which is the U.S. version, and then PAL is like international. It's just for people to make more money so they can't sell shit internationally. It was Ridiculous. so stupid. Um, did you get any other video games? Um, I bought like two – at Super Potato, I bought two random video games that I just thought looked cool. Okay. Have you – like can you – do you have a – One's a Game Boy Color game. Did you try I, and plug it into your Game Boy Color? No, I haven't. Even though I do have, I have my Game Boy Color. I would here. love to know if it works. Can you also buy the consoles there? Like, can you buy it? Yes. A, a, oh, dude, uh, they had stacks and stacks of consoles you could have bought, like a Nintendo SP. Um, I'm pretty sure I didn't look for one. They had a lot of like, uh, do you know that one that's called like Family Computer or something? It was no. like, it was like their Nintendo before Nintendo. They had a bunch of those. Um, I, I feel like I would spend, I could spend all day in that video game store. Oh yeah, for dude, it was it was so much stimulation where I had to like calm myself down. I was like, Matt, calm down because I truly felt like a kid in a candy store. Were you using like any 
phone translation google lenses or anything like that were you like using translation a couple times i had to use google translate and type something out when one time patricia put in a whole nother order at a karaoke place and we wanted to say don't ignore that last order having to type that out was like a bit of a mess but the guy understood it oh like you (laughs) typed in in english and then it showed us text in japanese and you like yes okay, okay there was a a guy that we met who had this thing called like a pocket talk Okay. It's the size of like an iPod. Okay. You say whatever it is you want to in English, and it says it immediately right back. And you can listen to something, and it says it immediately. It felt like a gadget out of Spy Kids. And I know (laughs) that there are... I mean, hell, it's 2023. You would assume there's tons of little things like that. It was the most wicked piece of technology I'd ever seen. Why? How is that not an app on your phone? I think it is an app on your phone. But there he just, is, it was a standalone. But he had a standalone. It's like 300 bucks, but it was the Was most, it in his voice or it's in a, like a stock voice? Like, does it keep your yeah, voice in... it's like a stock voice. Okay. It's not like AI transferring your Matt King voice into Japanese? The hell no. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. That would be like a Spy Kids thing. That would be pretty cool. But... So you didn't feel like a tough language barrier at any point where you were just like, I don't know what's going on. Where do we go? No, How do we do this? No, but I'm, I'm pretty easy going about like the barrier because I'm like, I'm not like, well, this sucks. This is the end. Like right. kind of a thing. There right. was one time where we were eating at like a Japanese barbecue thing and like we were given an iPad and most of it was in English, but the, the delete button and the order button were in Japanese and we had to like, kind of figure that out. And I remember he being like, oh, this is like so frustrating. Like it's gonna be okay. Yeah. We're gonna figure this out. That's yeah. where like I don't know, you, you have, have a like, little bit of patience. Yeah, yeah. But I never felt like I was like, damn it, like or stressed about just like I can't understand what we're doing here. Did you do any like uh, things with tour guides or guided events or anything? I, I anytime I saw like an English tour guide like talking to a whole group, I would just sit there and like listen to. Oh, it. get a little freebie action. Is that a, is that illegal? <laughs> I think it's fra- it's not illegal, but I think it's frowned you upon. You shouldn't listen to a tour guide that you didn't pay for. I don't. <laughs> I feel like I've done that too. Like if you're ever at a museum, I won't follow them the whole time. Yeah, but if you're at yeah, if you're at the exhibit and you know, or like you're in a museum or something, I will do that too. You eavesdrop on the tour guide. You're standing in front of the painting. He's speaking loud enough for everyone to hear. But what they do now is they give everyone headphones, and then the person the guy speaks very quietly, quietly, but you can hear because it's in the head. And then you're like, "What is he saying?" And that's how they think they get uh, you to pay for it, but. Uh, so you know, would you do a guided tour, or you don't think it would be worth yes, it? Yes, in a whole different like, like if you were there for a month, would you do like a guided tour of yeah. like where would you want to have seen or gotten a good in Kyoto? There's so much history out there. I would have definitely wanted to do a uh, guided tour. How are the cherry blossoms? Gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous. That uh, they they weren't pink. Because they get pinker as the season goes. They yeah. get like their pinkest right before they stop Fall growing. Off. Yeah. But lovely. Yeah. Lovely. I think, but I think it was like a perfect timing to be out there. But cherry blossoms are not like, oh my God, I just <laughs> got to see the cherry blossoms. They're the best dance. Like, sure. Yes. It is a beautiful flower that you get to witness. But yeah. I think there's way more uh, better things to experience out there. So you didn't have like an allergy attack either when you were out there? Just no. sneezing up a storm. There were also hardly any bugs. In the yeah, maybe they they like know how to pesticide or something. I don't I didn't know. See any bugs? There was no trash anywhere, but also no trash cans. So what'd you do with your trash? You hold. Kind of had it? like a, have a little baggie and wait for the right time to like go throw it away. What do you think America could learn from Japan to be more clean? Absolutely. Like no. When you, people say clean, what do you mean? Like the streets are like the streets are clean. Everyone just practices cleanliness there because it's like bounds like the Shinto religion oh, that they yeah. have out there, where it's like to be closer to God is to like keep your place and your your area clean. Did, did the air feel cleaner too? Yes. Like when you're breathing, and like, I was expecting it to like be this like smog some industrial and... smog in the air. It was in, insanely clean. I also feel like a lot of people take pride in the jobs that they have out there. Like, there's oh, yeah. like, everyone seems like they're so true and bound to their profession. They're not just phoning it in. There's a bit of like a rat race, I feel like, in America where it's like people are like wanting, are in the, are temporarily in the positions that they are just trying to get higher and higher and higher. Huh. And like a driver is like a true proper driver, but out here it's like a side hustle with like 
Uber and Lyft and stuff. All respect right. to people who do those, but I don't know. Out there, I just felt like people took way more better pride in their yeah. In it's their, like your career is your thing, and you're doing it, and it's your priority, and you're taking care of it. You're not just phoning it in and getting by. Yeah. And like bartenders maybe felt that way too. Like mm-hmm. they were like taking pride in their drinks and their karaoke. And I, yes. And I wish mm. we could do a little bit more karaoke. I wouldn't mind it. I think that's a fun way to pass the time. Did you do a lot of karaoke? Yeah. And- Patricia and I, we went to the karaoke place where they shot Lost in Translation. Oh, wow. I really wanted to go into the exact room where they filmed it, but apparently that room right now is like not of use, or I think they've sold that section of the building. I was trying to request like. I wanted to get in that room specifically. Do you know how do you know what room it is? You looked I it up. I googled it all. <laughs> like I, you know me, I'm a dork like that, and uh, not dork. I'm a nerd like that. Um, the other thing I wanted to go over with you, if we if we can jump back to Japan, but uh, I don't know if you've expressed your thoughts on Carly getting her appendix out. Oh, I can't believe it. Yeah, what's what are your what's your take here? She told me that she, you were really helpful. When she was in the hospital, I and had she was to like, be. Oh, "Yeah, I, I mean, I would have assumed, but she said like you were answering like all questions, and it was like guiding her through it." And what was she your... text? <laughs> well, I, I remember I was at the Houston rodeo, and I got a text from Carly, and she says, "Matt, dot dot dot," and I was like, "Oh no, like what? What? Like I thought some like drama yeah. was about to go down." And she said, "I think I have to get my appendix taken out." And I'm like, "Okay, hold on, what's happening?" Yeah. She goes, no, I'm at the hospital right now. And she um, had already gone, but they were offering her to take antibiotics or do this procedure. And I'm like, wait, hold on. Like, you have the Taylor Swift concert. concert. She goes, oh, I know. That's what, like, she was, like, super upset about it. And I was like, well, first I was like, calm down and enjoy it. Thank God that this is happening. Accept the hilarity of this whole moment. Make all the content and enjoy it. She did make a lot of content. She did. I wish I had like that level of like energy. Uh, uh, I wish I had that level of energy to put out that much stuff during it. And I just, I can't believe it. And what's crazy about hers is that sh- sh- the condition of her appendix was so severe yeah where if she had ignored it it would have killed her could have killed her what was the condition called necrotic and gangrene do you think it's just a total uh, coincidence mike that it happened to carly i think you both manifested it you both had you believe in now manifestation you don't believe in horoscopes or any horoscopes and (laughs) horoscopes and manifestation are two completely different things manifestation is dude your brain is so powerful like your heart is beating right now because your brain is telling it to. You're consciously like Matt King doesn't know, but your leg muscles work because your brain tells it to. Your lungs hold air. Your bladder, it's all your brain telling. But it's what, bound to happen. Your but appendix. your but your brain is telling your body what to do. Okay, and you and Carly both were like, I do not want my appendix to burst. I don't want to get sick. I need to be healthy for this specific thing. And I do think that if you, like, really, really force against something, you can't force against things because it, force never works. And you just, like, you essentially told your body, because you were thinking about it so much, your body couldn't tell if you actually wanted it or you didn't want it because you were telling your body, appendix, 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 appendix. Whether or not good or bad, you kept harping on it and your body was like, all right, he's thinking about appendix all day. May as well make it go boom. Bam. Obviously, that's not scientifically proven by any means, but I think the fact that you got yours the day before you're supposed to fly to propose, and Carly was so adamant about not getting sick, and probably had appendix on her mind as in like the back of her mind the day before the Taylor Swift concert. I do think there's something to be said about not thinking about the things that you don't want to happen. Like Bruce Lee always talks about this, not always, but he talked about it once. If I tell you. To hold a cup of water. Water. Be water. No, no, no. Not that. That's one of them. No. Be, that's the be formless, <laughs> be shapeless. All this quotes about being water. You could learn a lot about water. But listen, if I give you a cup of water and I fill it up to the brim and I tell you, go up the stairs, what are you going to think in your head to repeat over and over again? To not, to not spill the water. What do you, repeat it. To, don't spill the water. Don't spill the water. Don't right. spill the water. So you're, what you're saying right now is don't spill. So you're thinking about the thing that you don't want to happen and trying to negate it. Instead, if you think, keep the water in the cup, keep the water in the cup, and you think about it in positive terms, not 
I want to oppose this bad thing, but I want uh. to keep this good thing, then I think it would have been a different thing. So, like, for example, if Carly was like, instead of thinking, I don't want to get sick, I don't want to get sick, she's thinking, get sick, get sick, get sick. If she was thinking, I want to be healthy, I'm going to be healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I think she would have been at the Taylor Swift concert. I think your brain has a lot more power than you think it does. And you had this whole m- mantra of like, I don't want my appendix to burst when I have an important thing. I don't want my, pe-. but instead, if you change that mindset to like, I'm going to be healthy for the important events in my life, nothing, I'm going to be successful at the things I want to do. That mindset change, I think is, it is you looking at me like I'm a psychopath. I'm just, I'm, tr- I'm trying to remember this moment for when you have appendicitis. <laughs> Well, statistically speaking, I don't think I think me and Aaron are in the clear. It, oh, didn't I say if it happens all four of us, we, we're going to be on the news? <laughs> I feel like it's going to happen to Aaron. It's not. It's dude, I, dude. Aaron already has like a lot of like troubles with her stomach and intestines. Maybe I don't know. But that's my little theory. I might be sounding like a crazy person, but I do think that yeah. There's. It, did you also get your scars on different sides? Where's your scar? On the right or the left? On the right? Carly's no. is on the other side. No. Carly's was on the left, dude. That's where Carly's was. And yours no, is on the... Carly and I are in the... No, Carly had a, a belly button and on the I left. I have a belly button, one below. Maybe yours is on the left, too? Yeah, maybe. Why, you don't remember? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It's, it heals up. You don't take notice of that stuff. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> What are you doing this weekend? I don't know. There's a birthday party on Saturday night if you want to go. Whose birthday? This girl, Cam. She works with like Adam's team. Oh, yeah? Nice girl. She was, she's friends with like Frankie and Emma. Oh, yeah. She was at... You weren't at that. Oh, you were in Japan for Frankie and Emma's birthday at Star Love. I know. That I was fun. I made it. Star Love's... It's popping off, man. It really is. It's a great spot. It's where I had my birthday. Um, I don't think I'm going to do anything. Yeah, you probably should rest. <sighs> I know. At least tonight. What's your sleep schedule like right now? Are you going to sleep? To bed? Like- I went to bed at midnight and I woke up at like nine thirty. So today, yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. Yesterday though, I was still like a mess. Like yeah, I still you took, took a, like nap a three and- hour nap and then I'm still tired. I still am tired. I just still feel like I feel it in my bones. My bones feel a little heavy. They feel a little tired. Yes, but you know we got a lot we have to do, and I want to bust out that for my own clarity of mind. Yeah, we're, we're, I can't believe we're going to shoot a really fun Uno ad after this. Have you played Uno Attack? Y'all, this isn't even an ad. Uno, <laughs> I love Uno so much. And to be sponsored by a game that is my favorite game it's is the pretty cool. best feeling. But um, no, I know Uno Attack, I heard, is a blast. We're going to play it. Cool. Um, cool. Well, thanks and then for Joe's, watching. Joe's coming over, too. I want to wrap it up here? I think we did good, Matt. You think we did good? God, I love this. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you like our podcast so much and you want to see Mike and I in our own element even more, more raw, more unfiltered, <laughs> not unfiltered, the podcast, but just uh, more of us, please check out the Hoot and a Half Patreon. Mike, you want to explain a little bit more? Uh, yeah, we post our episodes early, ad-free, and bonus episodes and we're going to be doing live stuff, and we're going to be doing Q&As, and we see every comment, respond to everything, message us, whatever. Um, love doing it. It's great. And thanks for being you know, part of the Hoot and a Half family for those listening and watching, and we'll see you next week. Also, I'm posting a lot on Snapchat now. Oh, yes. I'm posting a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff on Snapchat and responding to a lot of you guys on there. So feel free, if you happen to, add me on Snapchat, Matt R. King. And yeah, much love. Thank you, guys. Bye. <laughs>